there's a comet coming and you may not want to miss it because it may be the best comet to photograph in 2023. It's called C2022 E3 ZTF. The ZTF refers to the Zwicky Transient Facility who discovered it in early March 2022. They did this from the Palomar Observatory in California and they used their wide field camera to image the whole northern half of the celestial sphere every two days. Now this comet has a short wide dust tail and a long ion tail as shown in this excellent image by Dan Bartlett. So if you want to photograph it you're going to need a field of view of something like two and a half degrees. Now, if you're not sure what your field of view is just take the sensor width of your camera sensor in millimetres divided by your focal length in millimetres remembering to factor in any reducer that you're using and then take the result of that division and multiply the answer by 57.3 and that will give you your field of view in degrees. It's a good idea to use a one-shot colour camera to photograph a comet and remember that even if you're on a tracker the comet is moving relative to the background, relative to the stars and so it's important to use quite a short exposure time. Something in the region of 10 to 60 seconds you can experiment to see what happens but I would recommend you start with about 30 seconds exposure time and take multiple shots. You can then stack the stars and then stack the comet as a separate uh, step and then merge the two results and there are various videos around showing how to do this in things like Deep Sky Stacker and PixInsight. Now of course you're probably wondering well how do I know where this comet is going to be and that's uh, what I'm going to show you next. Uh, as well as showing you where it's going to be on different dates we also need to take care with where the moon is going to be because when it's at its closest point to Earth on the 1st of February there's going to be a nasty 88% moon lighting up the background and spoiling the background of your shot and possibly making the ion tail harder to see. So it might be a good idea to get out earlier than that and photograph this comet a week or two earlier uh, when there's no moon around. So let's have a look at where the comet's going to be. Okay, so the position of the comet on the 15th of January is as shown here. It's between uh, Draco and Bootes, just at the top of Hercules. Uh, you can get your bearings from the position of Ursa Major at the top there. And, of course, the bright star Vega are towards the bottom left. And Arcturus over on the right side of Bootes. So if we uh, scroll through the dates from the 15th of January, this is the 16th the 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th. So it'll be just passing Ursa Minor on the 26th of January. And we'll keep going. 27, 28th, 29th, 30th and 31st of January and that the point of closest approach to Earth, which is the 1st of February, it'll be here. So just next to Camelopardalis and uh, the tail direction that you see on the planet here is representative. So it's, the ion tail will be away from the Sun. So hopefully that helps you to find the object because you'll hopefully be using something with about two and a half degrees of field of view you won't have too much trouble finding it even if you're on, your, you're on something which is not a go-to mount you should still be able to find it because you've got such a wide field of view so just you know take a few experimental shots find the comet and then try to work out where this ion tail is and try and get it into your field of view now you may wish to know how to add this comet into Stellarium so you can see where it is in Stellarium I'm going to show you how to do that now so get into Stellarium and go over to the left hand side and press the spanner symbol and then in this big, uh, you want to go to the plugins tab, and then in this big list here, you need to click on Solar System Editor. Make sure you've got the tick on Load at Startup. If it's not ticked, then tick it, and then close Stellarium and reopen it. And then uh, you'll be able to, to come in further and press the Configure button. So once you've got this Configure button, you press that, and you go to a solar system and you want to go import orbital elements in MPC format. So once you click on that, then here you want to type capital C forward slash 2022 uh, space E3 
and hit return and it'll come up with the, the object. Don't put the ZTF in there if you do it won't find it. Now select uh, or tick the uh, comet you want and then click add objects. You can now close these windows and you can do a search and actually it'll show you this object straight away and there's the object. So you can see that at the moment it is where I was showing you it would be uh, at the edge of uh, Hercules. Okay, so that's how you add the object into Stellarium. One problem with this, which I haven't mentioned, is that it'll be nice and high in the sky so you're not looking through too much atmosphere at a pretty horrible time in the morning. Uh, especially if it's in the next few days, this coming Thursday, it's going to be a get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and image around 4 o'clock in the morning uh, exercise. Whereas on the uh, 1st of February, you might fare better. Uh, 1st of February, it is going to be at its highest, about 70 degrees up, if you're at 50 degrees latitude like me, at around about 9, 9.30 in the evening. So it gets much more friendly time as we go from the sort of 15th, 16th of January up to the 1st of February. The, the time of night gets more friendly, but of course the moon comes into play. So have a look and see when it's going to be clear skies near you and make your decision about how you're going to approach this. I wish you good luck and uh, it will be great to see some of your images posted out there. I'm certainly going to have a go with two or three different pieces of kit and see how I can do. That's it for now. Clear skies!